Hello lovely people. In this video we are going to put head to head the Canon 50mm f1.8 against the Canon 50mm f1.4. Now this one retails at about £100. That's the f1.8 whereas this one, the f1.4, retails at about £385. So what do you actually get for that extra money? It's a question that I get asked a lot. Should people invest the extra money and get the f1.4 or not? So we're going to put them through them through the paces today and hopefully answer all of them questions for you. Let's go. Hello guys, I'm Mark Newton from the School of Photography where we teach you photography properly in a structured way by professional teachers. Now I'm gonna put these two lenses to the test. I've come down to the beach here near where our studio is and we're gonna put these two lenses through their paces because it's something that I get asked a lot by my online learners and my face-to-face -face learners. You know, is it worth spending the extra money? So, let's just talk about the obvious first. Well, this one here, the Canon 50mm f1.8, and this is the STM version of it, so it's the latest version of it. This is a plastic-built lens. So the first obvious thing is that this one's more plasticky, this one's built from metal. So the 1.4 here, the more expensive one, is a more solid lens. Um, and then the other obvious thing is that this goes to f1.8 and this goes to f1.4. So it's a slightly wider aperture, but only slightly. So not really that much in that. But I think the real test here is to see how much more you get if you spend the extra money and get the f 1.4 is it really worth it and that's what we're going to test today so the first thing that i want to put into test if you like is the difference in its capture of color clarity and contrast so let's go and find a decent location to do that test Right, so we found a nice bit of colour. This is lovely This for this test. Um, as you can see, it's colourful. It's got texture to it. We're going to have some tones because it's curved. It's going to be a really good thing to photograph for this test. Now, before we continue, I just want to explain a few things. We're going to take each shot at ISO 100. We are, I'm just going to be using aperture priority for these two shots and both shots are going to be taken at f8 which is like a middle aperture because we're just looking for colour in this particular test. And each shot is going to be straight out of camera, no post processing at all and that is how we're going to get a fair test between the two lenses. Okay, let's take the first shot with the Canon f 1.450 mil this is the one i've got on here oh and the other thing is we're going to put a lens hood on both of the um, lenses so that it reduces any kind of lens flare and like i say that's going to give us a really good test okay so i've got my focus point which is this middle bar bit here make sure my tripod is nice and steady so both shots are going to be the same and i've got my self timer set to two seconds so that we get absolutely no camera shake, and here we go. Cool, that's shot one with the 50mm f1.4. Now let's change the lens. Okay, now we've got the f1.8 on, it's in exactly the same place, and I'm gonna take the next shot. Brilliant. Okay, so them two shots are gonna be for testing color, clarity, and contrast, and we'll have a good look at them when we get back into the studio. Now, we are going to do another test, and this time for chromatic aberration. And that is where you get these colored lines around the edges of buildings and rocks and stuff like that. So, we're gonna go and find a place and take two shots and test it for that. 
Okay, I found a good spot. I'm gonna to have to put my Terminator glasses on, I'm afraid, because I literally can't see. I've chose this because we've got a mixture of edges. So if we're gonna see chromatic aberration, we'll see it here, hopefully. So I'm gonna take two shots. The first one with the F1.4 lens, and here it goes. Oh, and again, just so that you know, we're shooting at ISO 100. Both shots are gonna be taking at F16 on this one. So I've closed the aperture down a bit further and yeah, let's do it. Okay, that's shot one with the F1.4. Now let's change the lens and take the next shot. And now the 1.8 is on. Okay, there's the shot with the F1.8 lens. We'll have a good look at them when we're back in the studio. Now let's go and find another spot for the next test. Okay, the next thing that we're gonna test for is sharpness in the lens throughout certain apertures. So I've come to this beach up here, which has got a load of wooden slats going vertical and off into the distance. So I've got the F1.4 on to start us off. I'm gonna start at F22, and I'm just gonna come down a couple of stops each shot. Let's speed up that bit for you, because you don't wanna watch that. Okay, now I need to change the lens and do exactly the same thing with the F1.8, here we go. That's the F1.8 on. So same thing again, starting at F22. And again, you don't wanna see this, so let's speed up. Okay, so that's all them shots done now with the F1.8 lens. Now we're gonna do the final test, and that is the widest aperture. We're gonna test for bokeh. How much of a difference does it make between that F1.4 on the expensive le lens and f1.8 on the cheaper lens how much difference does it make let's now put that to the test okay so i've tried to set up a shot here to give us the maximum shallow depth of field that bokeh look because i know that one of the main reasons people buy this lens is because it gives you a wide aperture and gives you that shallow depth of field look so I've set up a shell, I've just wedged it in some wood here, and I'm gonna shoot um, underneath all of these beach huts. And I'm gonna take two shots, one on my F1.4 lens at its widest aperture, F1.4, and then one on the other lens at its widest aperture, which is, own, well, which is F1.8. So there's a very slight difference, and let's just see what that slight difference does. Okay, so this is the F1.4. I focused in on the shell. Again, I'm shooting at uh, ISO 100. Two second timer. And that's the first shot. And then I'm gonna change the lens and do the, the next shot. Okay, now I've got the F1.8 on and I'm gonna take the same shot, simple. That's all the shots done that I wanted to do. That's the testing done. Now we need to go and look at these pictures properly on the computer screen to really analyze the difference between these two lenses. Let's go back to the studio. Hello guys, we're back in the studio. I've had a really good look through all of these pictures and the results are quite surprising. And I'm gonna bring you them results in a minute, but I'm gonna just take this opportunity first to tell you about the courses that we have over at theschoolofphotography.com. If you're looking to learn photography properly, then we can teach you. We're professional teachers. Our courses are structured in a way to help you learn photography properly so that you learn it forever. We have been teaching since 2002. We've got thousands of happy customers from across the world. So if you wanna learn photography, Lightroom, studio lighting, Photoshop, all of that kind of stuff, come and see us over at theschoolofphotography.com. Okay, let's have a look at the first images. So these two pictures here were the first pictures that I took and they were to test for color and clarity and tone within the images. And when you look at them both together, so let's just flick between the two here. So this one here is the f1.8, and this one here is the f1.4 lens. They don't look that different at all. And for argument's sake, they're really, really similar. But when we zoom in on an area, and I'm gonna zoom in on this 
curved part of one of the wooden slats because that's going to have a lot of tonal value in there. So let's just zoom in on this area here. I'm on this is the f1.4 lens. And now let's have a look at the same place on the f1.8 lens. Now what you can see is that the f1.4 lens has in fact captured more color. Not much, but it has captured some more color. And the color that I'm referring to here is actually the reflection of the sun off of the sand. So it's like that orangey kind of color. And you can see that within the f1.4 lens, the more expensive lens, the colors are slightly more richer, but it is very slight. When you really think about it, it's really, really slight. That f1.8 lens has done a fantastic job. So that is the test for the color, clarity and tone. The f1.4 lens, this one here, just nips it a little bit by capturing, well, more richer tones and colors. Let's move on now to the next test, and that one was for chromatic aberration. And here's the two pictures here. First glance, you hardly see any difference at all. Now, chromatic aberration, like I said before, um, it's to do with wavelengths of light crossing, basically. And what you get is at the edges of objects, mainly buildings and rocks and stuff like that is where you really see it, you get a colored line generally a green line or a purple line. So we're gonna zoom in to the edges of these shots. Firstly, let's zoom into the f1.4 lens. And down the edge here of this wood, of this beach hut, you can see a slight green line. That's the chromatic aberration. If we go to the f1.8 lens version of it, it's not there. So what this actually means, just flick between the two. Here's the f1.4 version. You can see a very slight green line going around the edge of this piece of wood. And if we go to the other side, you can see a very slight reddy kind of purpley line. Now let's go back to the f1.8 lens. They're not there, <laughs> which actually means that the cheaper lens here, the f1.8 lens in this test performs better. The cheaper lens performs better in this particular test. Now, chromatic aberration, you see it more during sunsets and stuff like that. And this was uh, like round about midday. So you could start arguing things like that, but you're splitting hairs. I mean, in this particular test, the cheap one performed better. That really, really shocked me. Now let's look for at the next test that we did, and that was to test for the sharpness around the edges, particularly at smaller apertures, but I did a few different shots throughout the aperture range. Anyway, let's have a look at them. So here we have, first of all, the f1.4 lens shot with an aperture at f22, and then here is the same picture taken with the f1.8 lens again at f22. And what we're looking for is the softness around the edge to see which one will deal better with long depths of field, basically. So let's zoom in to the edges of this shot. Here is a zoomed in version of the f1.8 lens. And here is a zoomed in version of the f1.4 lens. Now let's just flick between the two. That's the f1.8 f and the f1.4. And you can see that there is a real slight difference, and I mean slight difference between the two. I think the f1.8 is slightly, and I mean slightly, softer around the edges than the f1.4. So the f1.4 is performing better really, really slightly in this test, this is a F22. And like I said earlier when I was out there, these shots are straight out of camera. There's been no post-processing or anything like that because that's the fairest way we can do this test. So they're straight out of camera on screen. Let's go to the next one down. So I basically just took a series of shots through the aperture range. The next one I took was at F22. 
So let's have a look at the F8 one. So here are the two F8 shots. And at first glance, you can't see hardly any difference. Um, the F1.4 is slightly darker, but I think the sun probably just at that particular moment probably just went behind a cloud or something like that. But anyway, we're testing for sharpness, so that don't matter. So at first glance, not much difference at all. Let's zoom in and have a look. So let's zoom in this time to the focus point or ran to near the focus point on both shots. So here's the F1.4 and here's the F1.8. And as you can see, no difference. Well, I can't see any difference. I think you've got to have some kind of miraculous eyesight to see any difference there between the two. The sharpness is the same in both of them and they both seem to blur, if you like, in the same place. And if we look around the edges of the shot again, again, both exactly the same. So no difference there with the sharpness at f8 between both of them lenses. Now let's go down to the next one I shot, which was at f4. And again, as we look at them both together, you can't see any difference at all. They look the same to me. And again, we'll zoom into the focus point and look at how the softness bleeds between the two. And again, I can't see hardly any difference between the two shots at all. It looks like the focus point might have moved a couple of millimeters or something like that. But as far as the sharpness and when it bleeds into the blurriness goes, hardly any difference between the two. The next one I shot was at F2. So let's go to the F2 ones and look at them both together full screen. And the first thing that you can see is that the F1.4 version shot at, shot at F2 is brighter around the edge, around the, um, the blurry parts of the picture. And again, I think that's just due to the sun going in and out at that particular time. So apart from that, when it comes to the sharpness of this lens and the way it's bleeding from sharpness into blurriness, no difference between the two again. So in that test, in the test of the sharpness of these lenses at different apertures, particularly the smaller ones, the f1.4 performs very slightly better at f22. The rest of the apertures, they're like near on exactly the same. Now before we go on to the last thing that I tested for, I just want you to know that the links to these lenses, if you do want to get them, the links are in the description of this video. Now, we're not getting paid or sponsored by Canon or anything like that. I bring you these videos because they're questions that I get asked a lot. That's why I make these videos. But if you buy the lens from the links that are in this description, we will get some money from it. Probably 0.00001 pence, but we will get something and every, every little help. So if you want to do that, if you are thinking of buying these lenses, you can use them links. It does us a favor, but that's just that's up to you if you want to do that. OK, let's go on to the next test that we did. And this one was a really good one because the, this lens is the widest aperture is f1.8. This lens, the widest aperture is f1.4. So what is the real difference between those two apertures? Because they're really close. There's not much in it at all. So that's what I tested for because that actually is one of the biggest questions that you get asked. That's one of the biggest things that people want to know. Does that extra half a stop or so do much difference? So let's have a look. Here is the shot taken at f1.4. And here is the shot taken at f1.8. So what we're looking for is the background, really, the blurriness of the background. What that extra bit of wideness of the aperture, if you like, does to your shots. So here we go, f1.8 again, f1.4. And you can see, actually, that the f1.4, the circles in the background, the bokeh in the background, it's wider. It's like bigger circles. If we go to the f1.8 again, they're smaller circles. And it is 
quite a bit bigger. I was actually surprised by this. I, I wasn't expecting it to be, I wasn't expecting the bokeh in the background to be that much bigger between f1.4 and f1.8, so it's actually really shocked me, but it, it is slightly bigger, you can see that. Um, and softer as well, so the background is softer and the bokeh, or the bokeh circles, are bigger. So there you go. If that's what you're looking for, then this at f1.4, the more expensive lens, does perform a bit better. So here is my verdict. Now you get people that test lenses like they are nuclear physicists and that's not really a good way to test the lens, I don't think. This is a good way to test a lens in action, out there, testing the lens and putting it into practice. Because let me tell you something, very, very fine details you're not gonna see and neither is anyone else. So, you've got the obvious difference between the two. This has got a slightly wider aperture and it's a stronger build. So the, um, the more expensive one is a stronger build and it's got a slightly wider aperture. But if you are on a budget, there is absolutely nothing wrong with this lens. I think that that's the best hundred pound or so that you are gonna spend. It's just brilliant. For that price, it's gonna outperform a normal kit lens and it's gonna get you some cracking shots, particularly for portraiture. So if you've got the money and you, you know, you're a professional and you need it to last, and you need it to be a bit more sturdy, and you're worried about that extra, you know, bit of aperture, then you're probably gonna go for that one, like I say, 385 pounds. Whereas if you're on a budget or you've started out in photography and you need to earn money to start buying stuff, there's nothing wrong with this. This is gonna get you some cracking shots. So, there's my verdict. I really hope this video has helped you out. If it has, like the video please, subscribe to our channel, hit the bell button, share this video with your friends. That really helps us. You sharing our work with other people helps us out a lot. Don't forget to come over to theschoolofphotography.com where we've got loads of stuff like this and professional courses to help you learn photography. Thanks for watching and remember, learn more at the School of Photography.